Welcome to the amazing video where we're going to be talking about optimization problems, one of the most interesting topics in the whole chapter and maybe even in the whole calculus class. Finally, we're going to explain you why we were teaching you to find maximum minimum of those graphs. So if I ask a student, now you know how to sketch the graph of the function, to find the concave up, concave down, uh, intervals, maximum minimum, inflection points. Do you know why we teach you this? Probably you will say, well, because it's a math class. <laughs> In a math class, it makes sense to learn how to graph. Yeah, that's not a very interesting answer. Do you know that most of the things around you are being optimized? And most of the problems that optimize something, which means maximize or minimize, they have graphs. And that's why even the graph of the diet you have to have when you are sick or if you want to lose weight has maximum and minimums or a graph that shows how long the red light at night should be, how long the red light versus green light should be at some kind of intersection. That one has a graph too. And since all of those problems have graphs, we want to find those maximum minimum values if it's time or dimensions or anything else, gravitational forces. Well, that's these problems we call the optimization problems. And uh, we call them constraint optimization problems as well, because usually in real life, there are some restrictions on the problem. Let's define first, what do we talk, what do we talk about? The constraint optimization problems are the problems for which a function, and we call it objective function. I like to call it OF because it's just faster, right? It, this function is to be minimized or maximized subject to constraints. Constraints are basically restrictions. I will teach you how to build a system of two equations. One will be objective function, the one that we want to optimize. Optimize means maximize or minimize. Optimize. And the other one will have equation for constraints. Constraints are basically restrictions. Restrictions. And also, it's not only about having restrictions, but constraints equation will give you some kind of relationship between the variables you're working on. For example, you want to build an umbrella, but you already have a fixed amount of material. That will be constraints and so on. We're going to give you suggestions how to work, how to uh, approach those problems called optimization problems, but they are optional. And I will start reading them slowly. And then we just immediately jump into the problem to make sense from the problem. The first step from the guidance for optimization problems says read the problem carefully. Okay, I can do that. Let's jump to the problem and read it carefully. Example one, with the given fencing material of 2400 feet long, build a rectangular fence with maximum area, find dimensions and the maximum area. That's it. That's all the problem to read. There's nothing else to read. Only one number. I don't see any information. It's confusing, frustrating. Okay, don't be frustrated. Go back and maybe move forward to the next step. I read it carefully. Now I want to identify variables, but actually I like to start with a picture. Organize the given information with a given picture. I like drawing. Maybe you noticed that. I like using colors and drawing. And I will start with this because it makes me feel confident and relaxing if I start drawing the problem. I see a keyword here, re rectangular fence. Okay, then I will draw a rectangle. Here is one, just one of the many. You can draw something different, right? And uh, then they recommend me to identify variables uh, and organize it on the picture. What do I know about the rectangles? I know that they have links and I will call it L and they have widths and I will call it W. You can call it X and Y if you want, just remember that. Now, I will list them because why not? It's just a nice way to do. L will be my links. And in many classes, we ask you not to forget about the dimensions. Since I'm working with feet, links will be in feet. Sometimes you even put it in parentheses. W will be my width. That's in feet as well. And then what else? Seems like they're talking about area. I don't, I don't see area given or something, but I can at least write it down. Area over here. And I will say that we will be working with area. 
in what dimensions area is? Do you know? In feet squared. You can think about it as length times width, so it's feet times feet, feet squared. Dimensions are actually pretty important. Uh, read in Wikipedia about the interesting case when the shuttle was sent by NASA, I think to Mars, and crashed on the, uh, when it was landing, and we spent millions and millions of dollars for that project, just to, for one reason it was failed, because people did not agree that we were working in feet or meters or kilometers. So definitely make sure you agree on that. Now, we organize information, that looks good. Step two, identify the objective function. Objective function, that's a new thing, so that's a little bit confusing. In parentheses it says, this is the function we want to optimize. Oh, okay. But it seems like it says, find the maximum area. So area is my objective function. This is objective function. And what do we want to do with area? We want to maximize it. Maximize. I see that this problem actually becomes well, pretty realistic. And uh, it seems like I want to build a fence around some open area. But for example, there was a, dis there was a discount in the store. I went to the store and bought 2400 feet of material. And now I'm stuck with this amount of material and I want to enclose the fence with this material. So it means I want to be smart about this. I don't want to build a fence that will have a gap, right? Then it was not enough of the material, I have to go back, buy more. Or I don't want to build a small fence and then some material will be left. That's not very smart either. So it's a very good realistic optimization problem. I also don't want to build some kind of weird shaped fencing which will not hold a lot of stuff in it. For example, if I'm a farmer and I have ships, what kind of fence is going to be this that can hold only one ship in a line? That would be very uncomfortable. So that's a very practical problem. And here we're almost done with building it. We figure out length, width, objective function, which is area. And also they tell us write the objective function in terms of the variables you just set up. Yes. That's a, the most important part here. Can you do that? Can you write down area in terms of lengths and widths? Well, yes, it is lengths times widths. We know that. That's not a, a complicated question here. And that's my objective function, the one I want to optimize. In this case, maximize. One more step. Now identify the constraints. Those are restrictions. What are the restrictions? Can I build an infinitely long fence like this? No. Why? Because the material is fixed. I'm only having 2400 feet of material. So this is how you should imagine. I will put a node over here in this ground and I will walk some amount of space, put one more material, one more node, one more node and one more node. And this is how you end up building the fencing, the fence, right? using all 2400 and now I want to do whatever I just did with A. Can I write down, can I write down my constraints in terms of the variables I just set up, lengths and widths. So how would you call mathematically the material we're using here if I just told you that I'm walking and then keep walking, keep walking and coming back? Well, I would call it, yes, Perimeter, exactly. So perimeter here will be called P. And how will you write down perimeter in terms of given lengths and widths? I will have widths plus widths plus lengths plus lengths. And that's two widths plus two lengths. And that one has a restriction. We cannot go beyond 2400 feet. Make sense? And that's my constraints, or basically restrictions, constraints. And I'm done here building, building a system, the one I mentioned at the beginning. This is my system, with the first equation to be area, uh, the first equation to be objective function, and the second equation to be constraints, or basically restrictions, constraints or restrictions. After this, we will be 
solving the problem. But first I want to introduce to you using some interesting um, equations and animation why this is a problem. So what's the problem? Why we cannot just build, you know, any? Why it's even realistic? Well, I went to GeoGebra and here I found a very nice setup where you can already choose the lengths of the fence, in our case 2400, enter. You can even you can even play with sides. Here it is. You can have more rows and more columns. For example, your gardener and you want to have flowers here and there or cucumbers in that row and so on. In this case, we don't have any. And also, instead of fixing materials, you can actually have a fixing area, like your backyard. You have a restriction on the backyard and now you want to optimize something. In this case, we have material fixed. Pay attention on the last equation. That's area, length times width, we know that. Look at the number at the end over here. It will be changing, right? So looks first, it is 13, 9, 109. Then it starts increasing, 24, 32, 35, 34, decreasing. 32 decreasing 26 20 20 0, 11 hmm it seems like we just passed some kind of maximum some kind of maximum area and it makes sense because how often do you see farmers having this shape of the of the yard of the fence or this shape of the fence makes sense so usually the most common shape we see is something like this a rectangle or a square and there is it's our job to find what gonna be the optimal solution for that and what are the dimensions for that optimal area. I also want to point out that we do work on the closed interval because we can't have infinitely long lengths. Let's see what's gonna happen if I do too much. If I go too far then my width becomes negative and negative width times positive length is negative area and same with too high or height or in this case width then the length became becomes negative and so on so we're definitely working on some kind of domain and that's why this problem is pretty realistic let's write it down also it's important to understand that we have a theorem which called extreme value theorem that tells us since we're working on the restricted domain we're guaranteed to have absolute maximum or absolute minimum so I have a system and now I'm going to change the color and now we're going to go to calculus part. We're going to use the constraints, that's number two, to eliminate all but one independent variable of the objective function. Um, not very clear. What does it even mean? Why there's a problem? So we have a function over here, area, L times W. We want to maximize that, but we know how to do that. You find a derivative, set it equal to zero, find the any points or the critical points. Critical points, maybe use the first derivative sign line and then put it here, plus or minus, boom, done, you found it. Good job, found the maximum. Or you can do second derivative test or closed interval test. But the thing is, I have two variables here, L and W. It's like having X and Y. How do you differentiate that? You will use implicit differentiation? Not really because a is the function as well. And a here is the function of two variables, l and w. So in calculus three class, we're gonna teach you how to deal with functions that have many variables. That's why you call it multivariable calculus. But in this class, we don't know that yet. So we have to get rid of one of these guys, either l or w and make a to depend on only one variable. Then we know how to differentiate it and keep moving with the problem. So I will use, so let's do like this, steps. Use two to solve for one of the vars, variables, vars. Just choose the one which is easier to solve for you, for W or for L. For this equation, doesn't really matter. So it will be the same, easy to do it for both lengths or widths. You can choose any, but sometimes one is easier to solve than another one. Okay, let's do that. 
For example, we can solve it for w. We can also divide by 2, why not? And it becomes w plus l equals 1200. Then w will be 1200 minus l. Put it in the box, that will be important. At the end, we will be using that. And it's in feet, remember? So you're gonna now step two, I will do like this. One, two. Now, plug whatever you just found into one. Okay, now it's a bit confusing. I will do like this, A and B. And by one, I'm talking about this one, the first equation into objective function. Objective function A is width times length. Length stays there, but width now is 1200 minus length. Voila! Now we have equation with one variable only. You can even rewrite it if you want. It's going to be 1200L minus L squared. Done. And that's my new objective function with only one variable. And I want to find maximum of this. Maximize. Not too bad. Also, in some problems, they ask you to find domain. Well, that's what we did here. Let's see. Use the constraints to eliminate all but one independent variable of the objective function. Done. With the objective function expressed in terms of a single variable, now find intervals of the variables. That's not always necessary, actually. You will see in different uh, books, uh, they think differently about that. But now I can say, you know what? Seems like area will be negative if L will be greater than 12. So it should be less or equal than 1200, right? Now if it is 1200, I show you, I already showed you in the animation, then the area will be zero because 1200 minus 1200 will be zero. So it seems like L belongs, that's a sign of being belonging to the interval, from zero to 1200. And then some books, uh, they debate, should we include both or not? I like including, then the problem becomes the problem on the closed interval and then we can use closed you can use closed interval method interval method to find maximum and minimum okay we're almost done actually well, last step left use any method of calculus you know to find the absolute maximum or minimum value of the objective function on the interval if necessary check the endpoints okay let's see for example, I will use first derivative test. So I will find C, A prime. Now we know how to do that. That's 1200 minus 2L. I want to find critical points. Don't forget to check DNE points. In the next video, I will actually do a problem with DNE points included. But in this case, L is just 600 because 600 times two gives you 1200. That's my critical point. Check that it is in a domain, or else I cannot call it critical point. But it is in a domain, so it is a critical point. I will use a sign line, and I will put it on a sign line for the first derivative. And then I will check the sign of the first derivative using some test points. Remember though that we cannot go too far. I will make restriction from 0 to 1200. So I will check what's happening at, say, 1. The derivative at 1 is positive because 1200 minus 2 is positive. What's happening at 1000? Well, at 1000, definitely 1000 times 2 is greater than 1200. Then it's negative. Then the original function f, which is my a, if you remember, that's my area, right? Area. Was increasing, hit 600, and then start decreasing. Then this 600 is my maximum I'm looking at. However, I need to be careful. What if uh, some maximum minimum happens on the end points? Then you can use closed interval method, closed interval method. And that method is when you take your L equals zero and L equals 1200, the end of the domain, and L equals 600, that's the critical point, plug them all into the original function and compare the answers. These two will give you zeros and this will give you no zero, not a zero, so it's a maximum. You can use that method if you want. You can also use second derivative test, just find second derivative 
plug 600 into second derivative and you will see that it will be negative that indicates global it will indicate local maximum i am like explaining it this way since right i will even write down since since there are no other critical points we found only 600 even outside of the domain there is no other no other critical points and area is increasing right before not not right but just in general it's keep increasing before before l equals 600 and then decreases decreases or keep decreasing after 600 it makes sense to say the uh, then then it makes sense to say that l equals 600 is not only local but also global maximum global maximum nice so i found the links right and the problem actually asks you to find dimensions and the uh, area so dimensions length is 600 feet width is remember i put you i told you to put width in the box now we're gonna use it where is it here it is width 1200 minus l okay 1200 minus l that's 600 feet again and they ask me to actually find the area so what is the area with the given material which is a restriction well area is width times length so width times length or you can use the second term formula in the box over there area is 1200 l minus l squared then it will be 600 times 600 equals 36 how many zeros four one two three four what dimensions feet squared correct and this is the answer this is what we ask you to find so what kind of rectangle is that it has the same length and the same width will appear to be it's a square since there were no other restrictions but just a given material seems like the optimal object is a square and that's why you see so many squares in the real life applications like windows and so on because the optimal shape the optimal rectangle if there's no other additional restrictions is a square the question for you what's the optimal ellipse then yes it is a circle how about 3d the optimal uh, square in 3d is cube and circle is a sphere that's why there are so many applications i have a hidden pictures for you over here and that's why i always want to mention have you ever noticed why the windows have shapes like squares right that's not a secret it was optimized by mathematicians until and it was told you that the optimal amount of light you can get is from the square shape and if the height is restricted then it becomes a rectangle additional restrictions they change the shape just like with the football field so if the running how to maximize the area to run for people that's a circle but then why the football field is not a circle it's a kind of rectangle right and then half circles on the sides because of the people sitting and so on they many different restrictions also because of the game how what's the distance supposed to be based on the game so more restrictions they add more ideas of how to optimize and minimize different um optimization problems and that's for engineers to do that civil engineers and so on using calculus it also called linear programming whatever we just do right now linear programming is a whole area in mathematics which works to optimize some kind of problems and uh, if you ever see a class called linear programming definitely take it it's very very interesting for example you can optimize the closest path from your house to building universities and hospital and so on and so on there's even the idea of building a perfect city what the perfect city will be if you have enough money and territory to build it from scratch 
where the hospital should be. Probably the hospital should be far from the school, right? Not to make people interact with kids interacting with sick people. Probably the store should be close to the house and so on. What else is optimal? Have you ever thought why the human eye looks like a sphere? Because it's an optimal shape. Same thing. What other optimal shapes are coming from the nature? So before I told you something that we are building as human beings, but nature figured out optimization problems a long time ago. For example, a ladybug is a perfect hemisphere because this is the optimal shape for the ladybug to run around, but still have a half of the circle um, and fly away. What else? The shapes of leaves are different and they depend on the restrictions they're living in. For example, apple tree usually doesn't live in the same environment as a palm tree. That's why they have such a different shapes. Palm trees you usually live somewhere on the beach, so they have different shapes that help them not to fall down during the storm. Apple bees usually live in a big forest, so they optimize the shape of the leaf to catch the biggest amount of sun they can for the photosynthesis. And so on. Do you know that there's a whole mass problem that explains why there are trees at the edge of the canyons? Next time you hike, pay attention. The trees that create spirals like this, that because it's very windy at the edge of the canyons, and uh, they use those shapes not to fall down. They can bend pretty well, but they don't fall down. They use aerodynamics to do that. Basic aerodynamics teaches us how to use the wind the way that it not only help you, but also don't break you. And nature figured out by itself using those trees or even shape of, shape of the leaves, those kind of shapes or these kind of shape help trees not to fall down using aerodynamics and physics here. And uh, we use it to build planes and many, many other things as well. There's so many different applications. Post in the comments below what kind of other applications do you know? And I'll just want to point out more mathematics about those applications. Did I tell you before that all those problems have graphs, right? So I should probably mention that again. Well, did you recognize the function before we took the derivative? Here it is. Did you ever think about this function before we actually differentiated it? We just taught it to draw the functions, but this is just a parabola, right? And it's this parabola that can, is, has a shape concave down. So since this is a parabola with concave down shape, it guaranteed to have global maximum. And that's exactly what we were looking for. But since this is the exact parabola, which has general equation as ax squared plus bx plus c. And in our case, it is a minus l squared plus 1200l plus zero. That's in our case over here. This negative sign in front tells me that it's concave down. It has global maximum, but global maximum for the problem is a vertex. And actually the vertex has a formula minus b all over 2a. From our numbers, it's exactly going to be negative 1200 minus b all over negative 2, which is 600. So we could find the solution much faster. Pay attention to those little things. Of course, taking derivative was simple as well. Here it is. But actually, sometimes you can avoid using calculus 1 in general because we know the vertex of the parabola from pre-calculus classes. I will make more videos with more complicated equations where it's not that simple, but you always should pay attention about the graph as well. So check the next videos about the shapes of different graphs. Next video will be about the problem over here where we actually ask you not to optimize the area or with the given material, but actually minimize the cost. That's a very nice idea. What if I already know how much it will cost me to build the area and I want to save as much money as I can? That is the problem when we build a cost function and we want to minimize it due to the given constraints, which are prices and the area or volume or some perimeter size. And there's one more video I made about the open box problem. How to build a box if you want to put a present into this box with the maximum volume. There are many, many more problems like that. 
Watch them enjoy that you understand such a complicated concept as optimization problem using calculus and feel happy that you finally know how all this is applied in real life. Thank you for watching and see you next time.